In learning objective four, we're going to discuss uh, what I consider the most important equation or identity, the cash flow identity. Uh, cash flow from assets equals cash flow uh, to stockholders plus cash flow to creditors. And why is this so, so important as an equation in our business lives? In small businesses, cash flow is king. You'll hear that terminology said uh, quite a bit. It's so critical. I was, uh, as I said before, CFO of a very small company. And it's just absolutely critical on Friday afternoon that you have to have cash available to pay the employees at 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon. All they want to do is, you know, go home, uh, have uh, be able to afford their bills, uh, enjoy life, and so on. It's your responsibility as a financial manager to make sure there's cash there. So this is a very, very important identity. Cash flow from assets, free cash flow equals cash flow to stockholders plus cash flow to creditors. Basically, a way to look at this is cash in equals cash out. Um, so there is no financial statement yet, but we're going to look at a statement of cash flows in the next chapter, which will detail uh, a financial statement to go along with the income statement and the balance sheet, which will measure your increases in cash during the operating period. Two ways to calculate this cash flow identity, uh, cash flow from assets equals OCF minus NCS minus CNWC, that's operating cash flow, minus net capital spending, the amount I spent on property, plant, and equipment minus change in networking capital, which is the amount I tied up in current assets minus current liabilities. And as I said before on the last slide, the other way to calculate cash flow from assets or free cash flow is cash flow to creditors plus cash flow to stockholders. Cash in equals cash out. Uh, cash flow from assets, let's break this down and look and see where we find this information. If we have to, if, if someday comes along where you have to calculate this, you'll know where to get it. Um, Cash flow from assets is OCF minus NCS minus CNWC. So operating cash flow comes exclusively from the income statement. That's the first thing we have to find uh, for any company. For instance, if we're looking uh, at it for Microsoft, we have to get the Microsoft income statement and find uh, pull off their earnings before interest and taxes, add back their depreciation expense. It's also off the income statement and then subtract their taxes. And this will give cash flow from operations, operating cash flow. That'll be the first term in your cash flow from assets. How much did I make from selling fiber optic widgets in the case of my small company like Com Technologies? Um, second, I need to look at how much money did I put into capital spending? When I say capital spending, I'm talking about property, plant, and equipment. So I take my ending property, plant, and equipment net minus beginning property, plant, and equipment net, and then add back depreciation in order to gross it up, and I get my net capital spending. Another way to calculate this, which is easier if your balance sheet has gross fixed assets, uh, take your ending gross fixed assets minus your beginning gross fixed assets, and you'll be able to calculate your net capital spending. That's much easier than taking your net values and grossing it up. Uh, finally, change in networking capital is simply current assets minus current liabilities ending, and subtract from that current assets minus current liabilities beginning, and that will see how much money you have tied up, cash you have tied up in working capital. Uh, now, the second way to calculate CFFA is CFTC plus CFTS, cash flow to creditors uh, plus cash flow to stockholders. First, cash flow to creditors, I'm going to take my interest expense paid off the income statement minus net new borrowing. Now, where do I find net new borrowing? I've never seen that on a balance sheet, uh, the term net new borrowing. Well, I look at my long-term debt. So I take my long-term liabilities uh, ending minus long-term liabilities beginning and subtract that from my interest expense paid that I found on the income statement. This will give me cash flow to creditors. Uh, the last term uh, I need to calculate is cash flow to stockholders. This will be dividends paid out in cash uh, minus net new equity raised. Uh, how do I calculate net new equity raised? Take ending equity, ending stockholders equity, minus beginning stockholders equity. And if you notice, uh, the uh, cash flow from assets equation, when formulated this way, looks a lot like the balance sheet. Uh, cash flow from assets equal cash flow to creditors, and that has a lot to do with liabilities, minus or plus cash flow to stockholders, which has a lot to do with um, uh, equity. So basically, if you remember the balance sheet equation, you can very easily remember the cash flow um, from assets equation. In summary, these are the key points you should have learned in this session, session number two. 
of introduction to finance, uh, the balance sheet. What is the balance sheet and why is it so important in our business lives? The income statement, the second financial statement that everything revolves around. Uh, corporate taxes and corporate tax rates and who sets these taxes and tax rates. And finally, the cash flow equation or the cash flow identity and why cash flow is king in the company and in your personal life. I hope you enjoyed session number two of Introduction to Finance.